Praise the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, welcome. I would like to uh, greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, through this ministry, uh, ECBN, Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Broadcasting Network. And, uh, and this is the program of New Life in Jesus. So I would like to greet you and I would like to bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters, I believe that uh, throughout uh, this ministry in ECBN, uh, when they telecast all the messages, all the messages, uh, you might have been watching a lot of women and men of God came here to preach and to teach you about God. And I believe that one thing the Holy Spirit might have speak to you through these messages. And I believe that what I'm going to share with you today, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and we will adjust our life according to the Spirit and according to the way of God. And you know, um, uh, we can success in our life uh, uh, through, through the walk, with the walk of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. Today, I'm going to take you to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. Chapter 30, the title of the chapter 30, it says, David conflict with the Amalekites. David have a conflict. What happened was, uh, let us read, I, I'm going to read for you from the first verse and I'll be stopping in between to explain to you what exactly happened, okay? Yeah, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag. On the third day, the Amalekites has, had invaded the south and Ziklag, had attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city and there it was burned with the fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters has been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lift, lifted up their voice, voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, uh, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the, the, the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. Then David said to Abitar and uh, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abitar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this group? Shall I overtake them? Hallelujah. So what exactly happened? David and all his men came and saw Ziklag was burned with fire out of sudden. So it was a shocking news. What they saw, it was a big shock in their life. So what David did, the only thing David could do at that time is to sit down and seek God. And he asked the priest to bring the apple and seeking the God. But what beautiful thing happened over here is David's wife and children was captive as well, along with the people, was taken away. Now, my brothers and sisters, I wanted to ask you one question. If something happened to our family members and you have to go and help them, that is, have to help them, no choice, you have to help them. Will you at that moment sit down and ask God, God, can I go and help them? We won't. Most of the time, 95% of our we Christians, if anything important or any emergencies come in our life, we are not going to seek God. We take our own decision and just carry on doing it. Isn't it? That is what we are doing every time. But we never seek God. We never sit down and ask God. I'm going to show you another issue, 
another same same type of an issue but how Joshua he dealt with this type of uh, same issue okay let us let us turn to Joshua chapter 10 I just read from verse 6 yeah and and the man of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal saying do not forsake your servant come up to us quickly save us and help us for all the kings of Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us what happened was uh, Gibeon and Joshua attacked the country called Ai 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 yeah he attacked and he captured the whole country and the surrounding kings know how God is working with Joshua to capture all these people and Joshua was a mighty man he was a strong man he was very close to God and he captured all of them and all the kings were afraid of him now they say if I leave Joshua just like that they're going to come and invade our country so what we do all the five kings joined together and wanted to attack Joshua so the, 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 the Gibeon Gibeon was a beautiful country more better than I no better than the, the surrounding country so Gibeons have a pretty they, 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 they went to Joshua and they said okay Joshua I want to be a friend with you I want to be a friend with you so Joshua accepted the friendship between the, 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 the Gibeon, Gibeonites so when Joshua accept to be a friend at, at Gibeonites yeah so whatever Gibeon facing Joshua will help so now all the five countries the king wanted to attack Joshua attack Gibeon so Gibeon ran to Joshua and said yeah that is where in verse 6 it says and the man of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp of Gilgal saying do not forsake your servant come up to us quickly save us and help us for all the kings of the Amorites who dwell in the mountains have gathered together against us now look this carefully in verse 7 Joshua ascended from Gilgal he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of Vela and the Lord said to Joshua do not be fear you know what happened now this is a reverse thing happening Joshua ascended he already prepared himself he already desired himself to help Gibeon and all his men was ready and they ascended and they wanted to go and at that time God speaks don't be afraid I am with you Joshua did not sit down and ask God so now very clearly I am bringing to you two issues one is David David's household was captured David's household wife children and all his village people and all his country people with the children and with the wife have been captured but what David did he sit down and he seek God but what Joshua did he ascended and he went on his way and then God spoke so there is now two issues we're going to deal with Josh David asked God and God says go my son and I will be with you go ahead of them and I will give you a victory but Joshua didn't say that Joshua he get ready now the both issue that we wanted to see now I wanted to take this keep this in your mind keep this in your mind and remember this what I have told you now straight away we go to Mark chapter 7 verses 34 Mark chapter 7 verses 34 and uh, please uh, listen to this again departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the sea of Galilee then they brought him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to put his hand on him they begged him they begged him and he took him aside from the multitudes and put his finger in his ears 
and he spat and touched his tongue. Then look up to heaven and sighed and say to him, a father that is be open. Now, what Jesus did, he want to heal this particular person who is mute and deaf. And everybody came and tell Jesus touch him and heal him. But he never do that in front of the people. He took him aside and he looked up to heaven and he prayed and he saw his father and he sighed. You know what is the sigh means? He, they, 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 they did. <sighs> that is kind of a sigh. A big, deep breath. A deep, big breath in a very strong emotion. And sighed at him and say, be open. Now, Jesus is looking up to the Father and ask the Father to help him to heal this type of healing. But another one, in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. Let us look in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Yeah? When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes, multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put his hand and touched him and saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately leprosy was cleansed. You see, leprosy is more fatal disease, a dangerous disease. Leprosy is where your nerve system will die. And you can't even feel anything. And later your finger, fingers in the joint, it will try to drop off. And eventually, one day, uh, gradually, uh, the day will come that people will collapse and they will die. That is leprosy. But what Jesus says, when that guy came and worshipped Jesus, and he asked Jesus, please help me, he just touched him and said, be healed. But the deaf, he brought him aside. He looked up to heaven. He made a clay. He put in his eyes. He did a lot of work to make him clean. But this guy, it was very easy for him to make him clean. A leprosy. You see? And now, David was sitting down and asked God, God, can I do this? But Joshua, he started his journey straight away. And, uh, and, and, and God came in between of Joshua, he said, Joshua, go and I will do it. Joshua didn't ask God. So there are two big issues that we're going to deal with right now. Asking God certain things and asking God and did not ask God. Yeah. When we say David, David was afraid at that time. What happened? Accusation upon David was severe. When you see, when you see again, the book of 1 Samuel, where we was earlier, 36, yeah? David was greatly distressed for people spoke of stoning him. You see, now, the multitude works all together. So, when you choose your friends, you have to choose in a specific way that the multitude's people surround you will make your life as well. You see, people wanted to stone David. And David couldn't do anything. But what he did, he, you see, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters, but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. He strengthened himself because there was a lot of accusation upon him, around him. And sit down and ask God, God, what am I supposed to do? Can I go? Because all these people accuse me. I don't know what decision to take. And sit down and asking God. Because David had a kind of a little fear at that time. Because a position was there. Gilgal, uh, Gilgal uh, the, the place. You know. Uh, Ziklag, sorry. Ziklag was in fire. And his children and his sons were captured and taken away. And he do not know what to do. He was in a place that he was lonely. So he sit down and he asked God. And God says, go my son, I will give you victory. Hallelujah. When you say Joshua, in the book of Joshua chapter 10, when you see all the men of Vela, all the mighty men were surrounded and agreeing with Joshua what he wants to do. So Joshua just get them and walk. And Jesus came in between. God came in between and says, Son, go and I will give you victory. 
Look, the people surrounded you will decide your decision as well. Not only you. If people disagree, you see, Jesus, in book of Luke, people dragged that mute man and that black, uh, deaf man to Jesus and say, Jesus, you touch him, you touch him, and he will be clean. You know why? These people wanted, as a spectators, they wanted to see what Jesus can do. But Jesus know what their heart is. He took that man away from the crowd and he looked up to the heaven and he prayed and he cured him. Because the crowd around him was not a good-minded crowd. Whereas the, 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 the man who leprosy, he sit down and he worshipped the Lord. He worshipped Jesus. He said, please make me clean. Jesus never looked up to heaven and asked God, never. He said, be clean, my son. Your spirit is good. Be clean. And he got clean. Hallelujah, my brothers and sisters. So, now, you have to make a decision, brother and sisters in Christ. When, when your situation is so bad like David, accusation upon accusation upon you, and people are talking, wanted to stone you. They are not at your side at all. They oppose you. They talk to you bad. You know what? David was a king. David did a lot of good things to those people. Those people in Ziklag and those men surrounded him. He gave his possession. He gave a lot of good things. When one bad thing happened, maybe David uh, wrongly planned. And when they went out and they came and saw that Ziklag was in fire, they now turned. They were so sorrow. They were so worried. And they turned themselves against David and said, David, this is caused by you. Because you didn't plan properly, David. Now, how David will feel? The whole people surrounded him, against him. There is no people of Wala like Joshua. Hallelujah, my brothers. My brothers and sisters, there are times in your life, there are times in your life, maybe in future or in the past, I do not know, but you know exactly, you know exactly the time, the time that you had went through this. Nobody was supportive to you. Never. Nobody was supportive to you. Everyone is against of your thoughts, against of your doings. Whatever you wanted to take a decision, whatever plan that you are doing, planning, they will be against you. Against 100%. Maybe even your father and your mother, maybe even your wife, maybe even your husband might be against you. Everybody is against you. But you know what you have to do? When people are against you, you don't be against them. Sit down like David. Put the app hold. Put the worship on yourself. Put everything on yourself and ask God, God, what shall I do? And in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 13, as God have said, my son, go, go over him. And you see, 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 7, then David says to Abitar, the priest, Am Amalek's son, please bring the apport here to me. And Abitar brought the apport to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. You see, God gave him an open door, says, My son, go. So in the time of trouble, in the time of calamity, when people are against you, when nobody is with you, seek God and God will direct you. But when everybody on your side perfectly well, and they understand your feelings, they understand your future, they understand your vision, and they are all holding together to you, saying, brother or sister, let's go together. This vision is our vision. Then you can just go, and God will be with you, and he will direct you, and he will be with you, he will come to you, like Joshua did. Hallelujah. So that is the exact thing. But one thing I wanted to show you, by my brothers and sisters, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, Verse 7, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, you know Jesus 
was praying throughout his ministry. He never stopped praying. Jesus went to the isolated area, to the mountain, when it was still dark, he prayed. Jesus prayed. Yeah? With vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and who was hurt because of his godly fear. Who have the fear? Jesus have the godly fear. When Jesus went up to the cross, shed his blood for your sins and for my sins, have a godly fear. Jesus himself have a godly fear. How much more you and me need to have a godly fear, my brothers and sisters. We need to fear God. Without fear of God, you cannot go anywhere. You know what? Immediately the Satan will come in, 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 inside your mind and he will tell, when you don't have the fear of God, he will tell, do whatever you want. God will agree with you. That is what he will say. And you know what you will say? You know, the, the morality. You, you, you don't have the morality. You don't have the good, good character or whatever it is. All your good things will be stripped off by the evil one. And you will start to do everything by your own decision. When you start to do by your own decision, another thought will come into your mind, says, whatever you are doing, it is right. That is why nowadays, people wanted to do everything. They talk about grace, only grace. Whatever you do, the grace of God is there and he will save you. And he will guide you. Don't worry, don't worry. Jesus already gone up to the cross and he already shed the blood and your sins are forgiven, finished. So now you can do whatever you want. But how about in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7? We read again, we read again. Who is in the days? Who is in the days? Let's let's read from chapter verse six, six. Or oh, let's read from verses five. I'm so sorry. Verses five. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest. Christ did not glorify himself to become a high priest. But it was he who said to him, "You are my son." He who said to him, "Who God, Father God, who created the heaven and earth," said to him, "You are my son. Today I have begotten you." As he also said in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay? And now verse 7. Who is in the days of flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears? Jesus cried and poured out his tears to God. He cried. He poured out his tears. He was praying. And... Uh, to him who was able to save him from death. Only God can save you from death. And was hurt because of his godly fear. Godly fear from Jesus. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience. Who learned obedience? Jesus no need to learn obedience, my dear brothers and sisters. Never, never. He no need to learn obedience at all because he is an obedient God. He is a God himself. Yes? But who learned obedience? Jesus learned obedience. So how much more you and me need to learn obedience under the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? Learn. You see, when Jesus say, Jesus went up to the Father and be obedient, be obedient to his own Father, how much more we can ask him, Father, I want, I'm willing to be obedient, please help me. And for sure, 100% Jesus will help you to be obedient. Because he obeyed his father. So my dear brothers and sisters, obedience is very important. I tell you something. When you ask God, every, every, every issue, every decision of your life, when you sit down and ask God, God will definitely speak to you. And if you obey him, I tell you, you are the successful person in this life. 100%. And you see, my number is going down. At the, at, 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 my number will be there. And call me. If at all you have any problem, if at all you being obey, obedient to our Lord Jesus Christ and nothing happened to you, call me and ask me. Call me and ask me. Pastor Herbert, what happened? You said that if I'm being obedient, things will go on well to me. But nothing is going on well. Then I will tell you what to do. Exactly. Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm just challenging you. Because nowadays is a time of evil. We need to obey. 
When Jesus can cry, you can cry in prayers. When Jesus can have a fear of God, you can have a fear of God. When Jesus have obedience, you can have obedience. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm taking this time to stop over here. Uh, and I'm going to pray for you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so that we can be both, me, even me, uh, I need to learn. Everybody, until we go into our coffin, we have to learn. So we have to learn this. Until we reach our end day, we have to learn. And once we have learned everything what Jesus tells us, when we go to the heaven and the crown of your life from Jesus Christ, from his hand, the hand which have been pierced by the nails because of your sins and my sins will come and crown you and throne you in heaven and say, my son, I love you or my daughter, I love you. That day we want to see my dear brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let us close our eyes and let us pray. My father, Jesus, I praise you. I glorify your name. Father, you are a great big God and there is no any other God like you, oh father. Father, you went and prayed, you cried, you seek God, Jesus, and you were obedient, and you have the fear of God since you are a God. You created heaven, the earth, heaven and the earth. And when the creation was taken place, you were there with God, and you are God. Father, how much more we need to be obey, be obedient to you, O oh Father God. Father, Please forgive all our sins, O oh Father. Wash away with your precious blood, O oh Father God. Let us purify. Let us, let us come back to the love, the beginning love, the love where we started and start to love you and start to walk in your way, O oh Father. Bless us, O oh Father God. Bless us. Let your blood to come and cover us from the top of our head to the tip of our toes. And each one, Everyone who is watching this program right now, I bless them in the name of Jesus. I bless them. When and in, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 8, when healing was taken place, oh Father God, I pray, whoever needs healing right now, I pray that the power of our Lord Jesus Christ of healing to move into their body right now, oh Father. Let them to feel the healing power. Of yours, O oh Jesus. Let them to be healed, O oh Father God. O oh Father, whoever couldn't pray, whoever was left out in prayers for many years, let them to come back. Let them go to into their room, close the door, and seek your face and let them to pray again. Cry in your feet and be obedient to you again, O oh Father. Father, I bless each and everyone who is watching this program right now. I bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that your presence will be with us always, wherever we go, whatever we do. Let your precious hand to be upon us. Let us learn what you have learned while you were in this earth, O oh Father God. I bless each and every one, in the name of Jesus. In the precious blood of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Take care. See you in the next program. Bye.